and welcome to the channel. I'm back to break down my favorite plays at the tight end position for this week 10 NFL DFS slate on DraftKings. Before we get into it, if you could please leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any future content that I upload. That'd be greatly appreciated. I've also released multiple NFL Patreon packages over there on Patreon, linked below in the description, where you can get access to things like my projections, matchup charts, play calling, pace charts, target sheets, cheat sheets, etc. So go ahead and check that out if interested. Hey, with that being said, let's go ahead and start breaking down my favorite plays at the tight end position this week. So as always, I like to go ahead and look game by game as far as what Vegas is telling us. The very first spot that I have interested is in this Eagles-Giants game. Um, we've seen the line the lines climb in both of these teams' total. The Eagles opening up with a 22 implied opening, and then now they're up to a 24.25. The Giants opened up at 19 points implied, and now they're up to a 20.25. So we've seen some positive line uh, movement as far as this game is concerned. And the guy that I want to talk about is Mr. Evan Ingram taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, when looking at my matchup chart for tight ends, we can see that the Eagles are the fourth best team to target this year as far as tight ends are concerned. Really struggling against the tight, tight end position, giving up 16.7 DK points a game to the position. Um, and most Notably, I mean, recently we've seen um, Ingram get a lot more involved in the Giants' offense. He comes in on a 4-5 or five price tag this week. I mean, looking at his target share over his game logs the last few games, he's got 10 targets, 10 targets, 9 targets the game before. After really struggling to get on the board for a while there, you know, 2 targets, 3 targets, it didn't really seem like the Giants were using him. He had 10 targets the game before, but really wasn't putting up any DK results. 5, 9, 9, 5, nothing really... Uh, too great as far as DK points are concerned. And then the last three weeks, we've seen him pick it up 10, 12, 15. Starting to get a lot more involved. Comes in on a decent salary at 4 5 on DraftKings this week. And then when you factor in the matchup and what Vegas is telling us as far as uh, liking this game to be a little higher score than it was first implied to, uh, I definitely like Evan Ingram. And then he's just grading out uh, really good in my uh, projection model. So, first guy to talk about, Evan Ingram, like him this week. Moving further along, the next game that I want to talk about is this Texans-Browns game, which is a game that we've seen the total drop uh, significantly due to the weather. This is going to be really windy. I think that uh, Vegas is adjusting. I mean, some major change in the line here. Uh, down 4.8 points for the Texans and down 3.2 points for the Browns. So a game that I'm not really all too excited about in the passing game. More of a more interest in the running. However, as far as a tight end is concerned, we can see some checkdowns and still some positive uh, results and the guy that I want to talk about is Jordan Aikens taking on these Browns and it really comes down to you know we're looking at, at different salary tiers and Aikens comes in at a 2-9 price tag this week on DraftKings um, and we're looking at his game logs you can see you know he's targeted a fair amount it's not like he's a huge target guy but at a 2-9k price tag the results we've seen have been pretty uh, decent. He's got set, he had seven targets in week two, three targets, three targets, four targets. You know, with a couple receptions. Um, I've got him projected for three receptions this week, so I do think that he's a viable option. And while he isn't the like highest upside guy, it's really just about if we if you need to pay down uh, for an option at tight end this week, I do think he's viable. And I do think that with the weather concerns and the Vegas totals dropping, we're going to see a lot more short checkdown passes. We're going to see a lot more in the run game. And uh, that's going to favor him in comparison to a, a, a long wide receiver threat, such as like a Will Fuller. We could see more action going to uh, Jordan Akins in the past game. So like him this week. Moving further along, the next guy that I want to talk about is in this Washington-Detroit game. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, the guy that's been a, a breakout candidate at tight end all year long. Um, he's garnered a lot of attention in fantasy I feel a lot of uh, chatter has been going around him because of just the volume he's been seeing when looking at my target sheet you can see that um, TJ Hawkinson currently comes in number eight in the league in targets on the year um, which isn't a, quite as good as Evan Greenham the guy that we talked about earlier in the video uh, number three on the year but Hawkinson's right there with him and then when we're looking at my matchup chart this week um, and the matchup that Hawkinson gets to face you can see that the football teams really struggled um, against tight ends. The sixth best, te sixth best team to target on my tight end sheet as far as matchups concerned, giving up 15.4 DK points a game. And then when looking at um, Hawkinson's game logs and seeing how involved he is in this offense, 
I think it becomes very apparent as to why I would have interest in him this week. He's got the matchup. He's got the target share. Eight, Ten targets in week eight. Eight targets last week. Six targets the week before. And he's been getting in the end zone consistently. Touchdowns in three out of his last four games. So you always like to see that. You want the uh, tight end to be a red zone threat. And TJ Hawkinson has definitely showed that um, he is one. And then you look at the Vegas data. They have a 25.8 implied team total. Very solid. So it all um, comes together for TJ Hawkinson this year. He's got the... Uh, stats to back him up as far as on the year and then when you're looking at the matchup chart um, it's definitely a good target uh, the Washington football team giving up 15.4 DK points a game so I definitely like TJ Hawkinson this week next game that I want to talk about is this well it, I get a lot of interest when we start moving towards the uh, the four o'clock games at the tight end position because I do think that there's a lot of um, viable options so First game that I want to talk about is this Broncos-Raiders game. Two tight ends in this game that have uh, been real good in fantasy. First guy I want to talk about is the top tight end in fantasy, really, when it comes down to it, is Darren Waller. I've got him projected to be the top-scoring tight end on the slate when looking at my matchup chart against the Broncos. They have been pretty good against the tight end position, you know, 20th best team to target, so it's not like they're up there with these teams that we've talked about targeting so far. However, when looking at uh, Darren Waller's game logs, I think it becomes very apparent as to why we'd have interest in him because the guy's just a target share beast. He comes in at a 5'9 price tag on DraftKings, but he's definitely my favorite tight end play on the week by far. 10 targets last week, 6 targets in week 8, 9 targets, 7 targets, and then once again, uh, another tight end that we're talking about who scored um, 3 touchdowns in, in the last uh, 4 games. So, Touchdowns in three of his last four games. The target share is there. He's an athletic guy that can get down the field. He can get you the long catches. He can do it all. Um, and, you know, Vegas definitely likes this game to be more of a high-scoring total. Opened up at a 23.25 implied for the Broncos. They've gone up a half a point. The Raiders have gone down half a point. So it's not like we're dealing with major Vegas line movement. But, I mean, overall implied to be a high-scoring game with currently the over under at a 51 total so definitely have interest in Darren Waller factoring in all these things and I definitely have interest in the other tight end on the other side of this game and Noah Fant for the Denver Broncos taking on the Las Vegas Raiders uh, I got a projector for five receptions right now he's another guy who has seen his volume be very high and the Raiders aren't are the worst team to target as far as tight ends are concerned on my matchup tart tight end of the matchups we've talked about. However, it's a volume thing. I mean, these guys are priced the way they are for a reason because they have volume and no offense up there at a 4-9 price tag. And you can see three targets, nine targets, seven targets, six targets. That's a lot of targets for a tight end. Um, hasn't managed to get in the end zone is the only thing. These last few games, he had two touchdowns, uh, in, one in week one and one in week two but then hasn't uh, seen the end zone since. So I do think this is a good spot for him to maybe see the end zone and just a good spot overall because of his target share and his ownership. It really, as far as tournaments are concerned, the worse the matchup, the lower owned he's probably going to be. You may not see a lot of people talking about him because we have better matchups like the Eagles. Maybe a guy like Evan Ingram gets uh, all that ownership. And you could play a guy that's lower owned like Noah Fant. Um, still get that same target share and get some upside and maybe at some lower ownership. So I do definitely have interest in him this week. And then the last game, well, not the last game, we got two more. So with this Bengals-Steelers uh, game, next part that I want to talk about, and most specifically, I want to talk about Eric Ebron for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm looking at my matchup chart for tight ends. We can see that the... Um, Bengals are the second best team to target in terms of tight ends, giving up 17.8 DK points a game. So you got to love to see that. And then when we're looking at uh, Ebron's game log and his involvement in this offense, on top of the Pittsburgh implied total, uh, I do think that he's a, a great option this week. Six targets, five targets, eight targets, four targets, um, two touchdowns in his last two games. And, you know, He's been pretty consistent all year. Five targets, seven targets, six targets, four targets, eight targets. Pretty involved in this offense. And then when you factor in that the Pittsburgh Steelers are implied to score 28.75 or 26.5 points because the line's gone down, but still a very solid total. Um, it all kind of matches up for Eric Ebron on this one. He's got the matchup. His team has the points. And um, he's got the target share in the offense. So 
definitely like him. And then lastly, the last game that I have to mention a few guys in is this Niners-Saints game. And specifically, I want to talk about Jared Cook and Jordan Reed. So Jared Cook, I got implied for five receptions right now for the New Orleans Saints. He grades out to be a top three tight end in my projections right now. And while he doesn't have the best matchup, he definitely has the target share and he definitely has the upside. He's an athletic tight end that can get down the field and rack up some fantasy points. You know, he has, he does have to take on the 49ers this week who are the 28th best team to target. So not a good matchup at all. But when looking at Cook's game logs, we can see that he has been very involved in um, this Saints offense. And he's just an athletic tight end, which you always like to see because we get the yards with him, we get the tight ends. He scored touchdowns in three of his last four games. And the yardage comes along with it typically, you know, 51 yards, 32 yards, 52 yards. Um, so the upside's definitely there. He does come in at a 4-6 price tag, and the matchup is tough. But anytime you're talking about a guy with this kind of volume and a bad matchup, and we can get him lower than we typically would, on top of the fact that his team has a 29.25 implied total this week, uh, I do think that he's a viable tournament option and, you know, definitely has the upside to pay off and come in at lower ownership due to the matchup. So Jared Cook, a guy that I have to have interest in this week. And my very last tight end, that I want to talk about is Jordan Reed. Jordan Reed, a guy that just came back off injury. He's a guy that's been a talented uh, tight end in the league for a while. I think we all know what he's capable of. And in his first week back, he did throw up a dud, but I think it really had more to do with the fact that he was, you know, coming off injury and he's not really fully up to speed. Being that he's had a, uh, a full pra- week of practice under his belt with this Niners offense, I do think that we could see him go out there and be kind of the Jordan Reed of old. The only thing you got to worry about with this guy is injuries. He seems to get hurt every single year, but um, you can see in, in, in week two against the Jets, he put up that huge number, um, scoring 24 DK points, and then week three, he went down with the injury. He hasn't been back since. Last week, he only had uh, one reception on two targets, but I don't think he was out there for a lot of downs, like I said, just because he wasn't up for speed, and I think we could see his snap count increase this week. And at a 3-5 price tag, I think you got to have interest in that. And then when looking at the matchup that he gets – Taking on the Saints, they are the seventh best team to target in terms of tight end. Have really struggled in the tight end position all year long, allowing 14.7 DK points a game to tight ends. Um, so I definitely think that I'm going to have interest in Jordan Reed. I think that he could get be lower owned than he should be, um, just because he's been hurt. He hasn't been around, and people might be skeptical. And then when you look at the uh, implied total for the team, uh, 21 points, and they're going to be playing from behind in this game with a, a plus nine line. So going to be throwing the ball a lot i think that reed can go out there and get his with the matchup um taking on the seventh best team to target and i do think that he is a great tournament option this week so those are my top tight end plays on this week 10 nfl dfs slate on DraftKings. if you enjoyed the content please hit the like button subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any future content that i release Go ahead and check out my Patreon package linked in the description if you're interested in all my projections, matchup charts, play calling, pace charts, target sheets, etc. And we will see you in the next video where we're going to start breaking down the top stacks this week.